In today's video, we are going to be making healthy homemade snacks your kids and family will love. These are easy and affordable to make, and these scratch-made snacks are delicious for at home or on the go. The best part is all of the health benefits and the comfort from knowing exactly what ingredients are in our kids' snacks. So let's get started. We are starting out with one of my favorite things to make. This is so easy, so quick, and I know that it may not seem like much of a snack, but every time I make it, it is gone so fast. So we are making homemade banana bread, and unlike traditional ba banana bread in a bread pan, I actually make mine in a Pyrex, Pyrex dish. So I started off with two eggs. I am melting butter in the microwave. My two-year-old loves to bake. My daughter, who's five, also loves to bake, but oh my goodness, if you take any tool or anything away from my two-year-old, she just has a meltdown, as you can see. So we added one cup of brown sugar, I believe. I have a whole blog post dedicated to these specific snacks, the recipes, some information on ingredients you want to avoid from the store, here I'm adding one teaspoon of vanilla and just all sorts of information on making from scratch snacks. So my normal recipe, I do one and three fourths cup of flour, but because my daughter who's five has celiac disease, I wanted to make this gluten-free friendly for her. And I have found that oat flour is super delicious. I can use that and my husband doesn't even notice that things are oat flour. So if you are looking for a gluten-free option, but do not want that normal, like, oh, this is a gluten-free snack, um, oat flour is definitely the way to go. I did run out of oat flour, so I am actually mixing one cup oat flour with one half cup almond flour, one half cup coconut flour. Then I am just doing a teaspoon of baking soda and one half teaspoon of salt. I did add too many bananas to this specific banana bread, so it was way too banana-y. I didn't know that that was a thing, but it's definitely a thing. So uh, keep it to about four to five. I think I put seven bananas in. So do take note that you can make banana bread to banana -y. It actually becomes very sticky, kind of gooey, um, and then you just keep baking it because you don't really know if it's done or if it's just too much banana. So my family didn't complain. They ate it, but I was just so confused why this banana bread was just so banana-y. And then as I looked back, I realized, oh, I just put in the whole thing of bananas plus two others I had on the counter because I didn't want to be wasteful. So again, stick to the, stick to the recipe. I am, I've even used just two bananas, three bananas, but I like to add four. Four to five is the perfect amount. After all your ingredients are whisked together, I add the banana and then use a potato masher to mash up the banana into the mixture. If you are someone who does not like chunks of banana, you can definitely try to mash it as smooth as possible, but there are most likely going to be chunks and the chunks are good. So if this is your first time making banana bread and it's not smooth, that is perfect. You are doing it just right. Then I am taking some softened butter. I like to do this with all of my things, my bread dishes, my Pyrex, and I just rub softened butter all over so that nothing sticks. I pour my mixture in and I'm baking this at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. I do like to sprinkle sugar on top. I like to add maybe more sugar than normal, but you can just do one teaspoon, sprinkle a little bit on top, totally optional. You can totally skip it, but it is very delicious if you add a little bit extra sugar on top. I realized as I was editing this video that I don't have any after footage once it is baked. I promise it turned out it looked exactly like normal banana bread. I'm not sure what happened to my footage, but I do not have any. So I apologize, but bake that for 45 minutes and then wait about five to 10 minutes and you are good to cut into it. Our next snack is going to be some peanut butter protein balls. 
I laid out all the ingredients beforehand so it would be super easy and convenient to just dump it into the bowl. That's it. That's all this is. This is a super easy snack. You can eat it right away. I also place them back in the fridge and they harden up some. It just helps to keep it a little bit less sticky and more together and formed, but you can definitely eat these immediately after you make them. So I used one cup of instant oats. The recipe actually calls for rolled oats, but it I actually ran out because a lot of these ingredients or <laughs> snacks, not on purpose, use rolled oats as an ingredient. So I actually ran out and I used instant, but either one works. So I did rolled oats. Instant, yeah, instant oats, not rolled oats, either one, peanut butter, honey, flaxseed, chia seed, and then I just added the rest of the mini chocolate chips from what was left from my homemade granola bars, which you will see in a few minutes. If you need a measurement on the chocolate chips, I would do about one fourth cup. And all you do is just mix it together in a bowl. I just used a cookie scoop, scooped it out, I placed it in a smaller Pyrex and placed it in the fridge. I actually had a decent amount eaten immediately after I scooped them into this dish and I ended up making a whole second batch. So this, if you have a lot of kids, you'll want to double this recipe for sure. I doubled it, which I should have just doubled it before, but I did not realize how much my family was going to love these. These are also a really great snack to bring in the car if you are on the go or in a lunch if you are doing a picnic. Our next snack is going to be homemade yogurt and granola. And of course you can use this as a breakfast food as well, but I wanted to show you because it is super easy to make. So I am just doing a half gallon of milk. Of course you can just buy a half gallon, especially if you are someone who's very precise on measurements, but I just kind of eyeballed it and you know, went with it. So I turned the saute function on my Instant Pot, added the milk, and you are going to let that heat up until it reaches 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So we are pasteurizing the milk. It will become frothy, a little bubbly. And once you start to see your milk heat up, make sure you whisk it fairly continuously. If you don't, it will start to burn on the bottom, which isn't a big deal if it does but at the very end, you will notice these little rubbery flakes in your yogurt, and that's just from it getting scolded at the bottom. Once it hits 180 degrees, you're gonna turn off the saute function and let it cool down to 115. That's going to take roughly two hours. You don't have to stir continuously, just every 10, 20 minutes from then on out. Then I'm adding one fourth cup yogurt. You can do a store-bought yogurt. You can do a yogurt from your previous batch. You just need a yogurt culture. Then I am taking off the rubber ring on the lid of my Instant Pot, sealing it, making sure that it is on venting, and then I just press the yogurt button. You can let your yogurt ferment for anywhere from 12 to 15 hours. So I started about five o'clock in the evening. That way I was able to have my yogurt ready for about seven or eight in the morning. So try and time it out. I like to do 12 hours, but if it goes over that, you were completely fine. So now we are going to be making the granola super easy. This recipe can be modified in any way. This is just a very basic sweet granola. So what I am doing is I am adding one half a cup of coconut oil that's melted. It's melted just because my kitchen must be warm enough and where I keep my coconut oil, it's just always melted. So it makes it easy. I did one half cup of coconut oil. Yeah, my my daughter, two-year-olds, right? Uh, One half cup of maple syrup, and then I did four cups of rolled oats and one teaspoon of vanilla. That is it. You can totally customize this. You can do a half teaspoon of cinnamon. You can add dried fruit. You can add nuts. Personally, for myself, I do not like nuts. I know a lot of people do so many people, but I do not. So I just choice not to. Maybe one day I'll get bold and, you know, add a variety of nuts for my family. But for right now, I'm just making a very basic granola. 
I preheated the oven to 350 degrees and I'm going to let that bake from 20 to 25 minutes. I ended up being closer to 25, but check your oven. Once it starts to get golden brown, you know that it's ready. Stir about halfway through just to kind of mix things up. Before you spread it on your parchment paper sheet, just make sure that all of the oats are thoroughly coated in the oil that will help to cook them. So I'm just taking my yogurt out from the fridge. So what I did once it was done was I added, I poured it into this yogurt strainer. I got this from Amazon. I will link it down below. And I'm just going to be saving the whey. You can do multiple things with the whey. Go ahead and just Google all the different options and get creative. And then I just pour the yogurt. You can see how thick it is. I like to empty all of the whey. So if you're someone who likes not so much a Greek yogurt, but more of a runny yogurt, you can leave more of the whey. But I like to actually add in heavy whipping cream. It just makes it so delicious, so creamy. So what I am doing is just slowly adding heavy whipping cream in there. I also added a half a cup of powdered sugar and that just sweetened it. The powdered sugar was soft, so it, it mixed very well. If you use a granulated sugar, it might be a little crystallized, a little bumpy. It should dissolve, but powdered sugar is a lot safer. Then I just took a whisk and I just whisked it until I reached it reached the consistency that I wanted. So just slowly add in the heavy cream until you get that consistency. Then I'm just breaking up the granola. I'm going to be sprinkling that on top. You can also use this granola as cereal or as a cereal snack, add it with milk. I did that for my kids as well. It was really good, so delicious. This is so simple and easy to do. The only thing to keep in mind is just planning out the 12 to 15, 16 hours in advance. That way, you know, it's not ready at like two in the morning. Our next snack is homemade granola bars. I love to make these. They are so delicious. Again, you can add multiple different things to them to change them up, but this is just my favorite way to make them. So I'm doing three cups of rolled oats, use the last of those, and two cups of Rice Krispies. I like to mix them because we are going to be melting the other ingredients and it's nice to have these already mixed. It just makes everything so much easier. So then on the stove, on medium heat, I'm just going to be adding one stick of butter, brown sugar, and honey. And I'm just going to melt that, everything together, stir it continuously. My pan was a little bit too hot, so some of it got a touch burnt on the, the edge, but it didn't affect the taste. So just remember to whisk and stir continuously, and then we are just going to pour those over top of our oat and rice crispy mixture. If your coconut oil is not melted, you can add it into this. That way everything is melted at once. Where my coconut oil sits, like I said earlier, it's always melted. So I just added that after I added this mixture on top of the Rice Krispie notes. Once I have the oats and rice crispy all coated in our brown sugar, honey, butter mixture, I am just going to be adding one fourth cup of coconut oil. Again, if your coconut oil is solid, definitely add this into your brown sugar, honey, butter mixture. That way everything melts together. But since mine was melted, I just added this after. Then you're going to let this mixture sit for roughly 20 to 30 minutes. You want it to cool down because if you try to add the coconut flakes and the chocolate chips, it will melt. Trust me, I tried. I tried to skip that rule, make things go quicker. It didn't work. So I am just adding one fourth cup of chocolate chips and coconut flakes 
mixing that with that same spoon and then I'm going to spread it evenly into a buttered nine by 11, or sorry, eight by 11 dish. Now, if you want your granola bars to be thinner, more like the store-bought kind, you can place this in a nine by 13. I like to have it in an eight by 11 and actually make more thicker squares than longer rectangles. But whatever pan you have, it, it doesn't matter. The shape doesn't matter. The taste does. So these are fabulous, super delicious. And then I just place them in the fridge. The longer that they're in the fridge, the more they will set up. So you can eat them probably in an hour, maybe two hours. But if you leave them overnight, they will be set up to the perfect consistency. However, if you want to use these, you know, in three to four hours, it will work great as well. For this video, I tried to make them look more like store-bought or cut them more like store-bought granola bars. But if you do have an eight by 11, cutting them in smaller squares works perfectly. We have the most delicious crab apple tree in the front of our yard. And sadly during a storm, half of the tree blew over. So we had to end up picking all of the apples from that one side and we got 80 pounds of apples. So we decided we were going to make apple juice. And although this isn't a traditional snack, I wanted to add it just because sometimes drinking can fill you up even more than eating. So sometimes I like to offer a fluid first before, you know, trying to do a, a different snack that has a lot more calories and fat and sugar. So we just bought this juicer from Walmart. I will link it down below. And then my husband has been trying two different forms of filtering. So actually this coffee filter on top of cheesecloth works the best. The other one we bought is called a Big Joe and it's just a giant coffee drip system. I will link that down below. And we just filtered to make this beautiful apple juice. And even if you don't have homegrown apples, you can still use this technique with your store-bought apples. The next snack that we are going to be making is smoothie bites. So make a smoothie however you like. Add whatever protein powders or, you know, hidden healthy ingredients that your kids don't know. Because we are going to turn your smoothie into a fun bite-sized snack. So I didn't really measure out my strawberries, but I did measure out one cup of blueberries and one half cup spinach. I am then just going to wash them with a fruit and veggie wash. I will link that down below. I bought that from Amazon. I'm going to be adding a little bit of water and then blending it up. And what we are going to be doing is adding a little bit of honey and a little bit of gelatin. I did one ounce of gelatin. It was just one box of just the normal size gelatin one fourth cup honey for sweetener. I blended it together and just placed it in a silicone mold and put it in the fridge. I also bought the silicone mold from Amazon. I will link that down below. I will try to link everything down below, but of course, when I forget, not if I forget, when I forget, please comment specifically what you are wanting and I will link it there as well. So I'm just placing it in these heart silicone molds, taking a knife, running over it, and then I place it in the fridge. It did not take long to set up. I believe it only took like an hour, but the longer you leave them, obviously the better, the more it will set up. These were a hit. For whatever reason, my two-year-old will not eat a regular smoothie, but she loved these smoothie bites. So I did have a lot of extra. So what I did is I threw it in an eight by 11 and cut them up into little cubes. So my kids loved them. It was such a hit. Definitely can take them in the car. They did stay in their form, but did have a smoothie texture. So if you want a smoother texture, definitely try to filter out the juices, then add the gelatin. Can you say cheese? Cheese. Is that good? Mm -hmm. The last snack I wanted to share with you guys are homemade Teddy Grahams. Now the molds that I have 
do also have other animals, so maybe more animal grams, but whether or not you have molds or you can roll this recipe out and you just do cookie cutters, it works the same either way, but it is more like a traditional Teddy Graham. So I am just adding a cup of flour, a half a cup of cocoa powder, and a teaspoon of salt, and I am just mixing that together. After I stirred my flour, cocoa powder, salt mixture, I melted one fourth cup or one half stick of butter in the microwave. I'm just going to be adding that along with two tablespoons of milk, three tablespoons of maple syrup, and one half teaspoon of vanilla. Again, I will have the recipes linked down below and on my blog at westmanacademyhomeschool.com. I will say that this recipe isn't overly sweet. So if you are someone who likes a fairly sweet Teddy Graham, then definitely either add more maple syrup or sugar. I also sprinkled in one half cup of sugar. So if you want a sweeter Graham, definitely do one cup. Then you are going to mix this until it becomes a thick dough. This will actually be very easy to press into the molds with your finger. I tried to use a little spoon but I found that my fingers were the best method. I found these molds on Amazon. Again, I will link them down below as well. And then you're going to bake this at 325 degrees for 15 minutes. Now these molds specifically are a little bit bigger than a normal Teddy Graham. So if you want your Teddy Graham to not be soft, like a cookie and crisp and crunchy, then definitely bake it for 25 minutes if you are using these specific molds. I want to try different variations of making these, maybe some honey, some cinnamon, some chocolate chip, some raisin. I'm going to play around with them and see what all I can come up with. My kids love them. I just place them in a bowl, set them out, and they snacked on them throughout the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Kelsey from the blog westmanacademyhomeschool.com and I make videos weekly on homeschool, homemaking, and creating a wholesome home. Thank you so much and I hope you consider subscribing.